welcome to another exciting episode of The Dentist Show. I'm joined by Sheila Azuntaba, beautiful woman from Ghana. She set up her business called Innovative Microfinance right here in Ghana after going to work in different places like Echo Bank, you name it. But before that, she was a beauty queen right here in Ghana. And I want to find out what her parents thought when she told her mum, mummy, at the age of 19, I want to go and do Miss Ghana. Sheila, welcome <laughs> to The Dentist Show. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm great. Good, you look beautiful. Thank you, and you look fabulous. <laughs> so I want to find out, a couple of years ago, now I'm not going to say your age, um, because you still look very, very beautiful. Thank you. Um, at the age of 19, mm -hmm. you decided to go and do Miss Ghana. Um, what was the reaction? <sighs> 19, okay. I don't think I told my parents. You didn't know. Because <laughs> you were too scared. Them. Yes. Okay. So um, I actually went to watch the, the regional pageant with my mom. Oh, okay. Um, and I think a week before, I wanted to have a party. Okay. You know, national service. Okay. I wanted to have a party. Didn't have the funds to do it. So I thought, okay. I looked at the girls on stage mm. and I thought, I think it was 25 CDs, 250,000 CDs wow, then. Okay. Yes, that was a price okay. money. And I needed 18. Oh, I, I don't remember how much I needed. And I thought, okay. I looked at the girls on stage mm -hmm. and I said, um, easy. You I can, can do this. I can easily win this. Mm. But how do I convince this woman sitting next to me? Mm. So I got up and went to the washroom. Mm -hmm. And I met one of the presenters, Pikus Lai. Okay. So I told him, I said, this is the situation, you yeah. know. I'm here to watch this show with my mm -hmm. mom, and there's no way she's going to allow me to do it. <laughs> yes. And because I also had university that year, mm -hmm. so uh, she was like, no, you're just going to watch the show. Um, I told Pikus, Pikus said, okay, we're going to try and see how we're going to do it, okay. and then we'll announce your name on stage. So I came back and sat down quietly next to the woman, and then this guy comes up on, and says, okay, we have a lady here. I met a lady and I think she can win this for this region. Her name is Sheila Zontaba and if she's here, can she come up and represent the Upper oh East region? God. And everybody was like, yeah, Sheila, Sheila. So of course, the poor woman couldn't say no. <laughs> <laughs> oh so, my goodness. Oh, That's said, how you did it? Yes. So yeah, I went up there and I won. So, and you won? Yes. And what, like, so when you went home, what did she say? Like, was she angry? Was she upset? Was she happy? Um, um, I think a mixture of all, mm. all of that. You know, she was happy. She was also a bit, um, what has my daughter gotten herself Stuff into? Too. But she was okay when I told her, listen, I'm only doing this for the prize money tonight, mm. but I wasn't going to go and do the, you know, the national pageant. Okay. This was just for me to win. Okay. And then, you know, of course, I also had a bet with my friends that I'll take it. So, of course, I needed to tell my friends I won. Wow. That was it. So she was okay. She was okay. She was okay. Until we got a phone call from a family friend mm -hmm. who said, we actually think Sheila can make it to the nationals and she can easily be the first... Um, Upper, uh, upper, yeah. uh, lady from upper, oh, the, yeah. the northern region, that's Upper East, northern region and Upper West. Okay. I think it was the first, uh, first time mm. I, somebody from that uh, region won. Mm. So that took a bit of convincing. Mm. And of course, my mom is an educationist, mm. so her whole mind is, um, she's got three daughters and one son. Yeah. First and foremost, you all have to go to school, mm. you know, university, you know, the, the yes. usual stuff yeah. our, our mothers. Yeah. Yeah. So it took a lot of convincing, but she finally gave in, only with assurance that I'm entrusting my daughter to you to guide her. Okay. I don't want her going anywhere in Accra, on the streets of yep. Accra or anywhere, yep. soliciting for any funding. Mm. But if you're going to do it for her. And this lady was a, a Maha, mm. or S. Maha, sorry, okay. Abedipele's wife. Okay, okay, okay. So she took on board the whole task of grooming me, getting wow. me ready, you know, with all the um, etiquette lessons, how to wow. eat, how to speak, you know, everything. Wow. I mean, I have to give it to that so woman. So there was a, she, a proper course. Everything. She did it from A to Z. So and I, I breathed in. You breathed in. Yes. But what was the perception <laughs> of a young girl um, from the... Um, Northern region doing Miss Ghana. What was the perception at that time? I don't think there was any hope mm. Because no one from the region had won so everybody just thought it was a show We you know our girls watched and more or less dreamt of mm. but there wasn't really any hope that okay Is anybody from the north ever gonna get it? Mm. So even when I was you know getting ready and being groomed and given all these lessons yeah. It was, it was, okay, how is a Nordner going to do this? Mm. Because really, they don't think we are that beautiful. Mm. 
So that was the, the first one. And then the second one was, okay, what's she going to do? Mm -hmm. Because after that, you still have your education. And you, there's this perception. Yeah. I don't know where it started from mm -hmm. about beauty pageants being, um, I, I don't know, I don't want to use the word, but it's almost as if beauty pageants really don't do our girls any justice. Yeah. And that if you go into uh, any of these pageants, mm -hmm. it's because you have no hope. Yeah. Or yeah. It's almost like your yeah. last resort. Yeah. So with all of that, you know, you had other mothers, you know, looking at my mom and thinking, why would you allow your daughter, daughter to, to do, do that? that? So I had all of that as mm. well. But I, as I said, I had a very good support system, system. being my mother and my sisters. Yeah. And then I had Maha and her team as well. So there was no way I was exposed to, to any, any of the negative okay. aspects of the pageants. I because sometimes you hear about the pageants that, you know, the judges are interested in some of the girls mm. and it's fixed and all sorts. Do you think mm. at that time, those were some of the things that were happening or you didn't experience that? Um, I don't think so. If it was fixed, I don't think I would have won because I came from the Upper East Region. Mm. I, didn't, I didn't know anybody in Accra. Mm. I hadn't met any of the judges before, mm. not, in, not none of the girls. Mm. So um, I would say it was fixed. Mm. And if I remember, um, my pageant was uh, on DSTV. That I think it was the first time um, DSTV um, featured, shown. yes. And we had all these judges from Scott's Court, Michelle McLean, a, a former Miss Universe. Mm. And we had all these judges from all over the world. Mm. I don't think it's fixed. No. I, I, well, I, I, I haven't no, experienced that. No, no. I mean, that, that's, so. that's sometimes what you hear people saying that, you mm. know, um, it's been bribed and, you know, um, some <laughs> of the judges are really? interested How in some much? of the girls <laughs> and stuff like that. And so would you say that your daughter now, right now, you've mm. got two kids, mm. if your daughter said to you, Mummy, I want to do Miss Ghana, would you allow her to do it? I don't see why not. Okay. Because, you know, one thing about Miss Ghana is it gives you a platform. Okay. And it's an awesome platform. Okay. It gives you a voice, but ultimately what you do with that platform mm. Depends on, on you. you. You can either, you know, you, I, you have two doors. Yeah. You know, left, right. Yeah. But it, it depends on you. Mm. Either door, you, either one would lead you somewhere. Yeah. And that platform and that voice that you have can take you places. And mm. you can do so much to help a lot of people mm. along the way. So I don't think it's a bad thing. Mm. And people shouldn't look at it like, okay, um, what's my daughter getting into? No, it's a platform that actually empowers us. Mm. Yes, you have the glamour and the glamorous side, you know, the modeling, the photo shoots, yeah. the makeup, you yeah. know, the dress up and everything. Yeah. But it's so short-lived. Yeah. You know, you have you only do that for a year, mm. and you always have to think beyond the one year. Mm. So immediately you win, you've got to think beyond the one year. And you thought beyond the, the yeah. one year because you springed up. You went to do your MBA. You went to the UK. Mm -hmm. um, you worked there as well. You know, tell us about how you were able to spring up and do what you're doing at the moment, being a great entrepreneur. Um, two things: family support okay. system mm. the unit because I had more or less a pact with my my mom mm. um, that you have to do this for a year mm -hmm. but you're going back to school you know wow. don't 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 get into yeah. your head yeah. and don't think that it's all about yeah. the fashion so, and you stuck to your word yes I did I had no choice mm. I had no choice at all and I had uh, a sister who was in the university then and I had a younger sister who was looking up to me as well and then the brother and so brother. I needed to keep to my word mm. and also you get to meet all these young girls who are looking up to you yeah. and being the first uh, beauty queen from the upper east, yeah, uh, the northern it's region a big deal. The, so you had all these girls who were thinking okay if Sheila can do it we can all do, do it, it. Yes. and that was fun to watch mm. and you know to be honest we've had a lot of girls from the upper region come yes, up you know true. just from yeah, that so yeah. you I couldn't have disappointed mm. them and of course my mom would have killed me <laughs> <laughs> so tell us why you did the course that you decided to do um, I th um, right after uh, handing over my crown, mm. I took a year off and then okay. went to get a job okay. as a marketing um, yeah. personnel or marketing officer for an insurance company. Okay. And then I developed that interest. Okay. So I thought, okay, best was to go back to school because I saw how a lot of girls who I'd met mm -hmm. were doing so well for themselves. And these are girls who had finished school and were pushing us, okay, mm -hmm. you just can't, you know, sit here and think with your A-levels, mm -hmm. you're going to do anything. Yeah. So think of, you know, about going back to school. And the option was to do, to go back to Legon because I had that okay. before the, the pageant. Okay. Or to try and, you know, 
look for education elsewhere. And that's what Miss Ghana does. It gives you that platform. That platform. It opens doors for mm. you, um, amazing doors. Some wow. of them you are like, okay, at the age of 19, you wake up, you grow up overnight. Yes. That's literally what yes. you do. And um, I got an opportunity to go to London. So okay. I, I went to Westminster University and did my first degree. Yep. And I did it, um, I think I majored in marketing and business. Gosh, how can I have forgotten? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and I came back. Yeah. Right after I graduated, I came back. And I got a job with Ecobank mm. as um, a relationship officer. Mm -hmm. And started working in Ecobank, you know, marketing financial products. And that was where I, my interest in banking mm. Okay. started okay and then I somebody spoke to me about the Shivening scholarship mm. I thought okay I'm gonna have time to go back yes. to school then because <laughs> the first degree you know it's almost like a level yeah so you needed to yeah. you know go rise up I went through the process and then I got a scholarship got a scholarship and so I'm a Shivening scholar I know yeah. fantastic <laughs> <laughs> and I went to Strathclyde Business School where okay. I did my MBA in mm -hmm. finance mm -hmm. Came back to Ghana and went straight to Ecobank. And mm -hmm. that was the good thing about Ecobank. They actually gave me a year off. You wow. know, they said, you go to school, mm -hmm. do your thing. And when you come back and there's still an opening, we will we'll definitely have you. have you back. Fantastic. And they did that. Mm -hmm. But I got bored, really. I got bored with okay. the bank. And I, I always wanted to work with an international mm -hmm. bank, mm -hmm. you know, HSBC. Did you get bored because of what you had learned? Like you had so much knowledge from studying yes. and now it's like i need challenge i yes. need to be challenged yes. i can't be in the same spot exactly okay you know totally mm. and you know the one thing about the mba was we had the opportunity to work with all these firms and i saw how you know people were you know closing deals mm. and mm. i thought okay i couldn't wait to come home and close, and close some deals, deals. yeah no. nothing you know so I, I got this opportunity where okay there's an opening within city okay you know, and i thought okay should I try? Should I not try? Mm. I said, okay, why not? Yeah. I, I always have do nothing that. to lose. You have nothing to lose. Mm. The worst was the worst that can happen. And no. Say no. And then you stay where you are and then rise from there. Yeah. Um, I applied and I didn't hear from them for about two months. And then I got an email telling me, okay, there's an opening in Nairobi. Mm. Would you want to consider applying to Nairobi? And I thought, but okay. Why would they even offer me? Because this is Nairobi, this is like Kenya. You yeah. have all these well accomplished, mm. you know, bankers. Mm. And I thought, well, why not? Still try. Yes. Because city is made up of all these people from all over the world. It's true. And I applied and they called me. They said, okay, let, we're going to send you a ticket to come down for an interview. Mm -hmm. So I flew down to Nairobi. I met with the, the team for a whole, I, I think I was there for three days, interviews from department to department. Mm -hmm. And I came back and they said, I hear, I hear from them. Mm -hmm. I think three weeks later, I got an offer. And wow. the offer was, you, you have to relocate. Wow. And they're like, are you okay? Are you sure? I was yeah. like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I really want to go. It's okay. like, <laughs> there's a great opportunity this, this for me. This is what I was looking yeah. for. Immediately, I didn't, I didn't think about it. I think I said, okay, that's it. We're going to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Packed up my bags. Go on. Said my thank yous to Ecobank, thanked them so much because, of course, what you know, they, they accepted yes, me back. So I said my thank yous and then I left. Wow. Went to Nairobi. Awesome. Awesome really? time, of course. You were there for is it eight um, years? No, 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 just two? under three years. Okay. Awesome time. A, a, a bit of an issue with the language because I had to pick it up, you okay. know, learn a few things okay. because Swahili is like their, 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 their the first, main, yeah. the main language. But that was fun. Yeah. But Nairobi, I had fun. City Group was another, another story, but at least what it did was equip me to be who I am today in terms of being an entrepreneur mm. and understanding it from a banker's point of view mm. and then also from an entrepreneur's point of view. Um, I worked there for a while as an, a corporate and investment banker. Mm -hmm. And then there was an opportunity in Nigeria. Mm. And everybody was, oh, Lagos, you know, we don't want to go to Lagos. I was like, you guys, are you, are you serious? <laughs> this is like 40 minutes away from, from my, Ghana. From Ghana. <laughs> it means I could work and then go home, home anytime that you anytime. want to. Exactly. So when they, they, they announced it, I was like, it's a no-brainer. I'm going right in. Mm. Took up the, the offer, went, came down to Lagos, interviewed with my boss, mm -hmm. and then I was told, okay, we're going to let you go and interview in SA and come back. I did all of that, came back and got the, got the job. And then I moved to Lagos to head, um, there's a, a division called Global Transaction Services. Okay. So I came, I moved to head that. Mm -hmm. And I was there for just about two years. Okay. But that was 
the that beginning was, that was of the beginning. Sheila the entrepreneur. <laughs> that was the beginning of Sheila the, the entrepreneur. Yes. Who didn't give up, who, if you say no to her, she doesn't mind because she has to ask. Do you understand? And, so, and I think that's really important as um, when you are an entrepreneur, that you're not afraid, actually, of getting a no because the no could be a springboard and you can knock on somebody else's door and get a yes. Well, we're going to be right back after the commercial break and I'm going to find out about why she opened up her own company and not stay in Nigeria. We'll be right back. Imperial Homes Ghana and Great Britain has carved a niche for itself within the real estate industry as the premier provider of luxury homes in Ghana and England with a mission to provide safe, good value, modern housing and personalized estate management services to its clients and customers. All our homes meet the lifetime home standard as well as the highest standards of engineering excellence, safety, environmental sustainability and cost efficiency. Imperial Homes, a signature of luxury. Guba Card welcomes you to the land of gold, Ghana. The Guba Card is a unique loyalty card which gives you the opportunity to enjoy discounts of up to 40% on goods and services. You enjoy discounts of the best of hotels, amazing restaurants, beauty lounges, spas, health centers, fashion houses and shopping centers in Ghana. The Guba Card can also be used as a prepaid Visa card with Access Bank R Partners, offering you conveniences on all payment platforms. Applications is safe, secure and valuable. Call us or WhatsApp us on 0245-156705. Visit www.gubadiaspora.com. Guba Card, the best discount card in Ghana. With over 1.2 billion people, Africa is a large continent with a rapid economic growth, full of investments and business opportunities. It hosts numerous opportunities for entrepreneurs, businesses and individuals as Africa marches towards a better economic future. How do you become part of it? Who can you safely speak to? Where do you start? Think no further. Odana Connects. We have identified the challenges people face in getting the right people and discovering the right opportunities in Africa. Odana Connects will be the platform where people and businesses seeking opportunities in Africa meet and connect like never before. Odana Connect. Join our waitlist for early access this summer at www.odanaconnect.com. Hello and welcome back from that short commercial break. I'm still joined by the beauty queen, the entrepreneur, the businesswoman, the CEO of Innovative Microfinance. And we've touched on about her journey through her career, but now we are at the stage where she's decided to actually, I'm going to set up my own business. What, when did that happen? When was the light bulb like, okay, I'm going to set up my own? Um, hmm. I don't think it was I'm going to set up my own. Mm -hmm. I came back from Lagos, mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 I resigned and came back home. Mm -hmm. I, I had my son then and I didn't really want to go back into the, you know, the banking, corporate. yeah, the corporate mm. world because you know, you know how it is. New yeah. mother, you yeah. just want to have your baby. Yes, you don't want anybody to touch the baby. You know? So you, we want to spend all the, the time, time with him. Yes. So I thought, okay, now you're back home. You're unemployed. You have a baby. Yes. Enjoy him and then soon. think yeah. of what to do next. Yeah. I didn't want to go back into the corporate world. I wanted to do something different. And the only thing I could think of was my project. Mm. So Innovative actually was my project, my MBA project. Oh. So I, I picked back. Your dissertation? Yes. Okay. And then, you know, dusted it off and okay. said, okay, let's get to work. Okay. But it was started as purely a friends and family kind of business to help um, friends and family with, you know, little loans to grow their business, just okay. to see if it was viable. Mm. And um, I thought, okay, I, I come from the north. Mm. I could stay in Accra and do this. Mm. And I bumped into a friend of mine whose company I used to manage mm. um, in Nairobi and also in, 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 in Ghana. And I told him that, he said, okay, what do you want to do? And mm -hmm. I said, this is what I have planned. I've mm -hmm. set up this company mm -hmm. and we're basically helping women mm -hmm. 
but I don't have the capital. So I, I literally just have what I brought back home and everything I have in terms of my savings. Yeah. And he said, why don't we sit down, put together a proposal and let's talk. Mm. But look at how you can impact lives in the mm. process. And I thought, wow, okay. Mm. How about do something with a purpose, make money, yeah. and, you know, and then with a purpose. Yes. So I sat down, we, you know, tweaked everything and yeah. then presented it to him and he said, okay. Let's see how we could do stuff up north. Okay. Because here's somebody who wasn't from the north, actually wasn't from this country. Oh, wow. But had um, most of his businesses up north okay. and thought, okay, I've made some money, mm. so let's see how we can give back. Definitely. And I thought, okay, giving back is easy. Mm. You know, there's so many NGOs and they always think about, let's see how we can, you know, put money here, set yep. up this. But what I studied or what I found out, even when I was doing my dissertation, mm. was there's no free lunch. Mm. And where a community had free, they were more impoverished. Mm. So there wasn't really any, you know, people had to be responsible for what well, you the, gave yeah. them. Mm -hmm. So for you to be able to help people or, and impact lives, they needed to wake up and to believe, be part yes, of it. to be part of it. Yeah. You know, they have to be responsible as yeah. well as you being responsible. Mm. So I thought, okay, we don't have to give them free, yeah. but we can get them to do something with it. Yes. Ultimately, they pay back. Yes. And then they can grow their businesses yeah. and then help their children yeah. and, the, you know, totally the community. Yeah. So we went up north and we did a pilot. Okay. And it, it, it worked. It worked. And we, we did a pilot in communities where they had the most NGOs. Okay. And these NGOs were struggling because all they did was given them was given. free. Mm. So we came up with a term that, you know, financial inclusion needed to transcend grants. Okay. You know, you need to look at financial inclusion. Mm. Everybody talks about, you know, how we can get people financially inclusive, yep. get them to be, you know, uh, to help eradicate poverty. Yep. But we're not getting there because every time we do that, people are given free. Mm -hmm. And when you give somebody free, what you do they do more, with it? Exactly. They twist. don't do anything. <laughs> You, know, you wake up and then you're at home waiting. Okay, when is the next action aid? Yeah. Um, the next um, care international coming mm. in mm. with free lunch. Mm. It's true. But one of the messages we had for the women was we would empower you, we would educate you. Yes. Because sometimes it is not because they don't even have, but they don't. They are not educated enough to know the options available yeah, to them. Have. Yes. Yeah. So we decided to relaunch Innovative. Okay. To be um, a socially focused microfinance, okay. impacting lives, and still also making money. And making money out of it. And that's how and innovate, that's how, yes. Okay. But I want to quickly touch on, you know, when you were doing your dissertation, were you thinking of um, setting up something um, back home with that in mind? Or was it just, I'm writing a dissertation, this is what I'm, I want to do it on. And then you did it. I don't think I had the mind to start something. I just wanted to see how... Um, the NGOs got it wrong mm. because the whole problem is you have I think the northern region has the most mm. 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 I mean yeah. the, all the NGOs are there are based there yeah. and still it's the most impoverished mm. so there must be a reason so why, why that so I, I actually just wanted to find, find out. out no the reason why I'm just kind of touching back on that is that sometimes you don't know that you've worked on something that actually you can go back to yeah because you, it was I, something I, that you I, just I, totally, I finished, you'd finished your dissertation. Yes, I finished, I, was became, I, I, I handed over everything. Yeah. It was MBA student yeah. of the year, yeah. that year for Fantastic. my school. Fantastic. Everything was okay. I was back home working. Yeah. But I went back to that. You went yeah. back to that proposal. Mm -hmm. So sometimes your journey can go backwards on something that you did maybe a few years ago, but you then pick up because of the, the, your circumstances has changed, right? Yes. So, so you're helping women in the rural areas with microfinance. What type of businesses were you helping them with? Everything. Okay. You know, the north, we have Upper West, Upper East, and yeah. then Northern Region. Mm. Upper East, it's crafts. Okay. You know, the basket weavers, crafts, yeah. um, pottery, yeah. and then smallholder female farmers. Okay. We do mostly, I think 95% of our clients are women. Okay. In Accra, we're here, mm. but you would always find innovative within the urban centers, but we don't serve anybody around the okay. urban areas now. Okay. Okay. They have too much. Okay, yeah. You know, they're, they're spoiled yeah. for choice. They've yeah. got all the financial yeah. institutions. Yeah. So we, we just position ourselves in the urban towns just mm. so we have access to banks, okay. technology, and all of that. But then we have our stations 
in the community. Mm. So in Accra, you find us in places like um, Maslalo, Choco, okay. Jamestown. Okay. That's where we work. Okay. And then we, we, we actually have the office in Adabraka. Okay. In Bolga, we are in Bolga town, okay. but we are in Bongo, we are in Zwarongo, we are in Sumbrongo, we are in Sirigo. That's where we are, yeah. okay. where the women are. But we would not necessarily Why just... Why women? Why, um, why just women? It's a no-brainer. <laughs> I love it. Uh, <laughs> it is a good word. I mean, <laughs> women do everything. Mm. And I'm from the north. Yeah. I see how my mothers work. Mm. I see how hard they work. Mm. I mean, you have no idea. One of these is, I think I'm going to, I have to take you there yeah, just for I you to, to see. Yes. I haven't been there yet. I mean, these women do everything. They wake up at dawn, go mm. and pick shea nuts, come back, prepare everything and still get kids to school. Mm. They do everything. They don't sleep. True. until everybody sleeps it's which true. is the next day mm. so it's for, for us it, 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 it was a no-brainer and they're also loyal very loyal, loyal. The extremely men. extremely <laughs> i mean they're actually thankful that somebody thinks about them and mm. comes all the way to the community mm. because you know what i also found out was they really don't want free lunch mm. they don't they actually want to work no they want to work yeah. so when you go there and you offer them the education you mm. give them the basic bookkeeping skills um all of these trainings they actually they tell you that listen we don't want to beg mm. all the time mm. we want to be given the chance mm. to do something with our mm. lives and if you have found out in us help us wow so they're loyal wow and it's a no brain i mean who wouldn't want to work with women <laughs> i agree <laughs> and have you had like really successful heartwarming touching stories that you have experienced when you've helped somebody grow their business yes we were in jamestown mm -hmm. we launched um you know there's something called village savings and loans yeah. which we have in the community we work with the cooperatives okay and then we partner with this foundation to see how it would work in the urban centers called mm -hmm. urban savings and loans mm -hmm. and this woman you know got up to give a testimony i think she got everybody you know we all, you know, took our tissues. Yeah. And she talked about how she went through a bad marriage, you know, and had four girls. Mm. And you, everybody would know that, you, you know that a place like Choco, if you have girls, you really have to be a strong mother. Mm. Because those girls could become mothers by 13. Wow. Yes. Wow. So, and she was a mother herself at 16. And she, wow. didn't, she didn't want to see that. Mm. So this was a woman who woke up and said, listen, I'd rather you know, beg. Mm -hmm. I'll do anything to make sure my daughters do not become mothers yeah. like me at mm -hmm. age 16. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, mm -hmm. two girls are now in university. Wow. And she did that just sewing wow. and then, you know, being part of our group, mm -hmm. borrowing as little as she can, mm -hmm. gradually building up her business. Now she has another place where she has girls sewing and it's also, people were like, wow, she said yes. And it got to a point where I was ready to give up. And that's what she said. I, I was just ready to give up because I had gone for a, a particular loan that mm. was too much for me to pay. And I just come out of a marriage with no support, basically no support. And girls who were teenagers, mm. and you can imagine, as a single mother. I know. So going through the whole training and everything, equipping herself, learning everything, she became our community spokeswoman. Wow. Yes. Now she, she trains, so we call them the community mobilizers and the community disperses because wow. she's doing exactly what we do, but in the community, in the community. on our behalf. Wow. And that's what we try to do. We empower them so we don't have to set up you know, structures within the communities. Mm. We have community leaders who work in the community. You know each other, they know. So you always know that, okay, I can go to you if you owe. Yes. And you become the bank or you become an innovative microfinance wow. on our behalf. Wow. So we try and empower them and offload a lot of the responsibility onto them, onto them yeah. so they can actually hold each other accountable. accountable. Yes. Fantastic. And setting up the business, Sheila, what were some of the challenges that you faced setting up a business here? Um, a lot. Mm. I think everybody goes through that. The first two years of Innovative, we almost closed. I mean, we almost said enough that's it wow. i just go back and beg city to take me back <laughs> you know <laughs> i was actually i was actually reaching out to my boss and saying, really? you know what? maybe i'll come and you know say okay i'm sorry i'm sorry yeah Please believe take me it take back. me back you know i could i would do anything starting a business is tough mm. and especially in our environment yeah. is double yeah is, is there a word like double yeah. tough? <laughs> I mean, double tough so, <laughs> and then being a woman mm. and believe me or not mm. being an ex-beauty queen as well mm. yes because you're dealing with 
stereotypical minds mm. where that okay is she qualified to do what she's doing mm. is she really cut out to do it does she know exactly what she's doing mm. and also she's a woman yes maybe and she's she, beautiful as well and maybe she just <laughs> wants to while away time yes and why would someone like her be passionate about helping impoverished women mm. so you have all of these things mm. and then you've got the banks who don't who will not believe you and give you a dime know. you know so you've got that raising capital is a problem people and everything else and we got a license that's a deposit taking microfinance, so okay. we can take deposits from the public. Okay. But who's going to trust you? Mm. Because you're an ex queen. Wow. People think all she knows is fashion. She mm. just wants to wear her stilettos and be all over the place, you know, dress up. Mm. And so the stereotypes is. Yeah. Can it really affect? Yeah, it does. And you have to be strong. Mm. You really have to be strong because mm. there are days when you go home and say, you know what? I, I just want to, you know, help. Yeah. Because yeah. I could just get a job and be okay, mm. but that's not really going to fulfill me because yeah. what else then do you have to mm. say for yourself? Mm. But then you wake up the next day like, you know what, others did it. So you They've done do it. it, so why not? Wow. You continue. So how many years has it been now? Since? Um, it's been nine years. Nine years. So 10th year, a little celebration. Yes. Yes, <laughs> a little yes. celebration. But how would you describe a 21st century woman? Oof tough go get it mm. i mean i love the new crop of women mm. they don't listen to any negative views mm. and if you have your negative views you keep them mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. sort yourself out with yeah. them but they go if she thinks that um for example weaving hair yeah. is what she wants to do yeah. she's going to do it in a way that it will become a household name yeah. That's what I love about the new woman. That's very confident. Very confident. Yes. Very go-getters are the new, uh, I'll guess, a way to describe the 21st century woman. Sheila, thank you so much for joining me on the show. I thank hope you've you. enjoyed yourself. Totally. You see, it's I been a nice conversation. I know, now. right? There's so many things to, to talk I about, know. but it's come to the end. And But you know what? I'm probably, after your 10th year celebration, I'm probably going to get you back on the show okay. and ask you, you know, how the 10 year has been, you know, um, probably each, each of those milestones, what happened and how you've been able to be a successful role model for young black I women will be so honored. Africans, honestly. Thank <laughs> you so much for being you. you. And thank you for encouraging other young women, um, women in the rural areas, to grow and have their own business and run their own thank business you. and be a boss of their own. Thank you, so, thank you much. so much. I hope you guys have enjoyed the show. I will see you same time, same place next week. Stay blessed.